Hi again everyone, it's been a little while since I've done a video and uh, thank you for those that are going to be watching this one again. I thought I'd do a video on battery drain to help people understand a little bit about what's going on here. Obviously you know that we've got the new battery out now, the medium battery. It's been out for a little bit, a little bit of time now. And the main thing to understand now with batteries is that they no longer output a constant power. So before the small battery used to send out what, 10, the large battery used to send out 100. And now it's the case that they send up to that amount out. Okay, And depending on what's connected to it will depend on how much power the batteries will output. Okay, so if I go to this first battery, you can see here that it's got an active usage of 1. The maximum output is 10. The capacity of it right now is 12 out of 150 rust watt minutes. And the charge left is showing the time, which is just under 12 minutes now, and it's going down at a constant rate. So, what I'd probably suggest here is to ignore the capacity for the time being. Your charge left, your active usage, and your maximum output are probably the key things that you probably want to look at. Okay. Medium battery, obviously it's got more charge left on it. And the large battery has got the same. Now, I've got all of these batteries here connected up to a blocker at the moment, which is using just the one power, which is good. But if I connect up this battery to the branch, for example, it's only one component, but it's using two in the usage now, which is interesting. Now this is what we call drain. Okay, this is the drain. This is the uh, the, the drain that's happening on the battery. So there's two units of power required, and the battery is draining. At 2 out of 10 whatever basically and it's only got five ish minutes left okay now you're probably wondering why the branch has two drain and the blocker has one and it's to do with the branch power the amount of power you're branching off which is two okay if I was to change this to three You can see that that's reflected now on the number three. It's probably not a very good image there. So I'll go over to this large battery instead and do it here. Okay. So I've got it connected up to the blocker right now. The branch I've got it actually set to five. Let's clear that. Connect up down here. And you can see we've got the five power output. All right. So all pretty straightforward. So if now I connect this up to the blocker, that's going up to six. Now, without going too crazy, we have noticed a bit of bug to do with the drain and some of the components and stuff. But let's just accept it what it is right now. Okay, the the drain or the the power usage on this large battery right now is six okay so that's five from the branch and one for the blocker if I was to change that so I was to come up with the branch out instead it's gone back down to five because the branch is only requesting five power okay so this is a good way of being able to help manage your circuits a little bit better all right now just before I, I, I keep cracking on at all, then it, it might be worth having a look at some of the other components that we've got. Uh, for example, some of these. Okay. And hopefully, you'll understand why in just a second. So let's put the end down. Simple circuit. Let's go to here. Yeah. 
left, so hopefully you've seen what I've done there. So we've got an output from, in fact, this will probably make it a little bit more simple, won't it? So the branch is outputting five, and then the output, the other output from the branch is going straight into the end switch. So that is why it is coloured up green, and it is using six power, which is good. That makes a lot of sense. If I add in the blocker here, we would expect it to be that it sticks again, which is interesting. And that is because you got five coming out of the branch into the blocker and then from here into the end switch. If I was to change this the other way around, okay, with these two, okay, let's get this one coming into the blocker. Okay, so you got five coming out of the branch into the end. You got one for the blocker and one for the end, so it's seven now. Okay, so you can see how just out of those two simple circuits, how you can drastically reduce and help your circuit to become more and more efficient, which is really good. Okay, now let's add. a um, counter into the mix. That's counter. Standard. Hold down, shape pass through. It's 93. And the active usage is 8. So that's going to be a little bit confusing here, but it's not at the same time. Okay. Now the on switch will all take on the one with the most power. Okay. But you've got five power in out of here, coming off here. Okay. One here and one here. So that's seven power being used up, and that's why it's showing the 93. So five plus one plus one is seven. 100 max output minus seven equals the 93 there. Okay. And then if I was to output from here to anything else, then it wouldn't be 93 coming out. It would actually be 92 as shown on the pass through there. Okay? Because you've got to take into account the counter had the one power. So hopefully that explains a little bit. But what if I connected up a memory cell? I think, oh, it's straightforward. Yeah. Okay. 92 power coming out, 92 power coming in, yeah, the power consumption was 8, and now it's showing 9, that makes sense doesn't it, yeah, it's good, okay, so we were to use the XOR, Showing his red toggled at the moment, so that's not going to work here. So let's go from here, from the counter instead, okay, into the XOR. Okay, so you've got 92 coming in, 92, 92 coming out, 92 coming in. That's interesting. So, what's the that's showing nine as well? So that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. See, we've we've noticed a couple of bugs here. So, the XOR here isn't actually using or consuming. Let's use the word consumption, okay? It's not actually consuming any power through this XOR. But the drain on the battery here is showing as nine, which is interesting. Very interesting. Now. Let's disconnect that for a minute. Let's disconnect there. Let's go straight from 
from the battery to the XOR. It's 100, 100, showing a 1 as a drain. So you would have thought, okay, this is showing no power usage, then this should have zero drain or zero usage as well because it's not actually using one power so we found a few different bugs like this and uh, it's taken a bit of time for a lot of us to kind of understand what's going on here and what the good what good ways there are of using this kind of thing now the best thing for the XOR okay which a lot of people are starting to understand and starting to use it for is for stretching the power out to the battery The reason for this, this wind turbine, this power generation component is output in 73, 73 on the input, 73 on the output. So effectively there is zero power loss using an XOR from solar panels, wind turbines, anything that generates electricity going to the battery itself see that's 74 let's just go up to 74 yeah so 74 is coming into here now okay and then if you put this up to everything else everything's back on there and you've got the eight now come on to the next bit which is some people may have heard that they don't need to use these continuous power or the infinite power or whatever people like to call it nowadays um, circuits to make sure that the batteries don't die. Well, it's kind of right and kind of wrong. It really depends on what you're doing in your circuit. Okay. Now, the rule of thumb is, is because we're not using that maximum output of power now, okay, of 100, we're only using the active usage. Right? If the input is higher than the output then generally as you can see here the charge left increases the battery charges up the capacity goes up but there is a point at which it flips over and the general rule of thumb is you need the power income to be the equivalent of the active usage plus 20 percent okay to stop the battery from dying now it doesn't mean that you have to have that all of the time okay if you have that like most of the time like for example you're powering a load of lights kind of thing and and for that if the day times are a lot longer and they're charging the battery for a longer amount of time than it's draining then you don't need the whole battery backup kind of system okay you can effectively just wire like I have done here the wind turbine to the battery effectively even though it's going through the XOR right now to the battery and then the power out going through the components and you won't have any issue with that so I'm going to keep that pretty short. I hope that makes a lot of sense to you. Welcome any comments. Um, I'll stick them on the thing. If anybody wants any circuits made up, uh, we're pretty good over here at making circuits. So a lot of things we can create for you. Anything more complicated, have a look at using the uh, the Rustrition site. Okay, connecting up to uh, the the Rustrition's Discord. And asking a few and you know for a few a few questions in there. There's quite some quite smart people on here. But for now, on this uh, friend not foe server, on Rust. Catch you later.